Vegas, city of sin, scandal, and sex. Anybody who wanted to be somebody was drawn by the heady cocktail of glamour and gambling. But with so many legends synonymous with this mecca, one man shone more intensely than any other. He was the undisputed heavyweight of this city. His name? Frank Sinatra. This was his palace, his playground. For a decade, he ruled the city with his cronies, a gang of entertainers they called the Red Pack. In a city full of swingers, Frank and company stood out. They had the swagger, they had style, but for Sinatra, it wasn't all songs and smiles, because he was a man with many deep contradictions. But if we were to find his spirit, will it be the cool, colorful and charismatic Sinatra, or will he reveal the more dark and dangerous side? I think Frank Sinatra was a mob wannabe. I think he was about as tough as soft butter, but he loved hanging around tough guys. He was out to help so many people. But don't ever be his enemy, because you're in for a lot of trouble. Our search for the spirit of Sinatra would take us from the bright lights of Las Vegas to the dark tunnels of Lake Tahoe, but would either of us be ready for the roller coaster ahead? I'm having a feeling of get the hell out of here. You what? I'm having a feeling it does not want me here. Come on, out, no, out, no, 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 no. Oh my God. Before we set out on our investigation, I wanted to find out more about the man behind the myth. I met Tony Opedisano, a personal friend of Sinatra's for over 20 years. So Tony, you worked for Frank Sinatra for a long time. Was it, was it difficult um, working for him and being a friend? Not at all. Did you just treat it on the same level? No. Ironically enough, I never had, I personally never had a problem. With, with Frank, which, by the way, I never called him Frank. I just, I had too much respect for him to what call him call Frank. Him? I used to call him Mr. S. Did most you? of the time, yeah. What, what kind of person was he, and how many different sides to him he were there? He was a very complex, very complex man. He was gentle, caring, loyal. When you had Frank Sinatra as your friend, you really didn't feel like you needed anyone else as a friend. I feel like that he's still kind of watching over me, over my shoulder. Do you feel his presence at any from time? time to time? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. We had many, many discussions about, like I say, all kinds of things. Reincarnation being one of them. So I'm sure he believed in something beyond what we're experiencing right now in this particular body. Meanwhile, Chris was uptown at the Stardust Casino to meet the legendary Vegas entertainer, Rip Taylor, who had a unique relationship with the Rat Pack. Uh, it's like the water is parting in the Bible. When <laughs> they walk into a casino, ooh, look who's here, oh my God, everything stops. But it was, it was, it was history, but we didn't know it at the time because we weren't working, we were having so much fun. We were having, we never ever slept. So what kind we, of things did you guys get into? Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there were many women visiting, you understand, you can't, you can't be rude to women. They offer, they offer things, you know, thank you, and you, they just know how to say thank you in many ways. Sometimes I was thanked to death, you know, <laughs> but, they, but the funny thing is, they weren't cocky about it, they were just having a good time all the time. So was Frank like right to the point? Always, you know, you walk in the room and say, how is he? You don't say, hi, how, how is he? Do you feel that the Rat Pack's spirit still lives here? The Rat Pack put Vegas on the map and it's still talked about as you know we're doing it now. The Vegas that the Rat Pack ruled is not the Vegas of the 21st century. The Sands Hotel, the Desert Inn and the Dunes are no more. But some hangouts still exist. So the next step in our investigation took us to the Golden Nugget in downtown Vegas, a place that was a second home to Sinatra in his twilight years. The Golden Nugget is an old-style casino and hotel, one of the few places that has remained unchanged over the decades. The showroom where Sinatra performed is still there. 
His dressing room is still referred to as Mr. Sinatra's. Perhaps we could find his spirit here, a place where he remains an important figure. The Gold Nugget's one of the uh, original casinos in Las Vegas. We've been operating continuously since 1946. And if you look at the old skylines, and the old marquees of, of Las Vegas, Golden Nugget was always featured prominently in that skyline. The Rat Pack hung out here quite a lot in the 60s. What was it about this hotel in Vegas that they liked so much? Las Vegas is one of those places I think that serves as a great backdrop to Frank Sinatra and uh, I think provided him with many of his songs, Luck Be a Lady Tonight. I mean, where else can you have that but, but Las Vegas? Chris wanted to find out more about Sinatra from the people who knew and served him. So he met up with the bellman and the porter who looked after old blue eyes on his numerous visits here. They accompanied Chris to Sinatra's favorite suite on the fifth floor. If his spirit remained anywhere in this hotel, would Chris find it in the comfort and luxury of these rooms? Oh, man. Now this is the actual room that Frank used to stay in? He's got his own private bar. Only the best. I want one of those. <laughs> so this is actually what it looked like when he stayed here? Pretty similar. They did a few renovations, but color-wise and wallpaper and everything is pretty much the same as it was. So I'm getting a chance to see exactly what Frank saw. With the sun setting over downtown Vegas, I met up with Chris in Frank Sinatra's suite to discuss how to further our investigation. Have you managed to pick anything up at all? Any energies while we've been here? Well, you know, when you were doing that interview with Dan, I walked around a little bit, mm -hmm. and I did feel something. I mean, I said, whoa, what was that? And I feel that there is a presence in this hotel. As I came up here and we walked down the corridor, I did feel strong energy. Well, when I walked in the door, of course, you know, it's extravagant. But the more I walked around and went upstairs, there's, there's a lot of energy in this room. I mean, a lot. And it's different from some of the other places we've been that I'm trying to figure it out. But it definitely is something that's positive. Mm. Well, it pains me to say this, but tonight I would like you to spend the night in this pokey little room and um, see if you can see how you feel, really. I won't have a problem staying here. I'm sure there's going to be something that's going to want to come back here. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> I left Chris alone. Or was he? I am trying to get in touch with Frank Sinatra. Bless me with your presence. I tell you, there's there's a lot of energy in this room. I'm not terrified. I'm not. I'm not afraid. And I don't. I don't sense any negative energy as long as I don't provoke anything. What I sense. You know, I don't feel his presence, but I feel the energy he left behind. I feel his imprint. We love you, Frank. Start spreading the news, it's coming your way. Do you hear that? I'm freaking just a little bit right now. Something just went on. Scraping going on on the window. All right, and I feel it too. All right, I'm convinced. There's something here now. <laughs> that is not a normal sound. That was a hand scraping on the window a couple times. Oh God, I hope I got this on audio. How could anything be scraping on a window five floors up? If Chris was scared by that, how would he cope with the events yet to unfold? Because the paranormal was about to get physical. Oh my God. Sunrise in Las Vegas, and our search for the spirit of Frank Sinatra had reached its second day. It was the morning after Chris's night in Frank Sinatra's suite. 
we met up to find if Chris had made contact with a stranger in the night. How did it go last night? Well, it was a comfortable stay. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> but more importantly, did you manage to feel or collect anything of Frank's spirit? This man, his legacy remains. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Of course, we see it when everybody talks about him, but walking around the suite that he used to stay in, I could feel his energy, definitely. And this guy had so much energy and he released so much in that suite that it still remains there today. Okay, we all know he's got a lot of energy, so I need to find a little bit more. But there is somewhere I'd like to take you next, and it's a place that he part owned in Lake Tahoe, and it's called Calneva. So we boarded a plane, leaving behind the desert debauchery of a dusty Las Vegas. We headed north to the snow-capped mountains of Lake Tahoe via Reno, the biggest little city in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to welcome you to Reno, Nevada, local time, 25 after 1. And another of the Rat Pack's haunts. Great, that's where we're going, the Polo Lounge. Now, apparently Frank Sinatra used to frequent this place when he was in Reno, and there's two guys in there called Frank, funnily enough, who um, I want to interview. Frank Perez is a longtime friend of many of the show business great and good, and he knew Sinatra from his Reno days. So Frank, could you tell me a little bit about the business you're in? Yes, I'm in the saloon business. I've been doing this for 45 years with great passion. What do you think it is about Frank Sinatra that has captured the imagination and the hearts of people to, to make him the icon that he is today? He's such a charismatic person. Uh, when you talk to him and you look at those blue eyes and he, he, he smiles, I mean, he owns you. The Calneva Lodge, um, we're going to be going up there. When you walk in that showroom, you'll feel the aura of Frank Sinatra. Do you really and think? Me and Sammy, sure you will. We're going oh. to find the spirit of Frank. You will. You'll feel it, believe me. Chris was talking to Frank Vanelli, who has a family connection with Sinatra. Now, I understand, while you were growing up, that Frank Sinatra used to frequent some of your father's shows. Dad was a singer in the entertainment business along with Frank Sinatra uh, down in the Los Angeles area. Frank Sinatra never really uh, got to see my dad until he actually performed up at the Calneva, which Frank Sinatra owned. Now, Frank, did you ever get a chance to meet and talk to Frank Sinatra? Got, got several chances to meet Frank Sinatra. Met him several times. Very strong, very powerful, very powerful man. Does the spirit of the Rat Pack and Frank Sinatra still around here? Still live on. Still live on. To a point, I'd say it. it I'd say it lives on. Uh, probably more up at the Calneva than any place else. It's, it's really cool because it's set right on the California-Nevada border, hence the name Calneva. In fact, the border goes right through the casino. It's really cool because there's slot machines on this side and there's no slots on this side. That's California right there. Is there any mysteries that we don't know about Frank mm. Sinatra or the Rat Pack? You know, if I told you, yeah. I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> the two Franks confirmed what I already suspected. The Calneva was the ultimate destination in our search for Sinatra. But I'd also heard rumors that he liked a little card game at the Thunderbird Lodge, an estate isolated on the banks of Lake Tahoe, and thought to be paranormally active. Well, this is the Thunderbird Lodge, Chris. And um, apparently, I don't know whether it's true or not, but Frank Sinatra used to come here and play cards. And it's supposed to be haunted. Haunted, huh? Mm. Okay. You think Frank Frank's ghost here? I don't know. It's your job. You've got to tell me. Don't I don't know who's here. All I know is it's supposed to be haunted. It was hard to believe that the beauty and tranquility of this landscape could ever harbour anything frightening. But if the rumours were true, then we were in for a rude awakening. Hi, welcome to the Thunderbird Lodge. Would you mind giving us a little brief history of, of the Thunderbird Lodge? The Thunderbird Lodge was established by a man named George Wattell back in 1935. He purchased 27 miles of shoreline from the Calneva Lodge, which is located right over there, all the way up to Zephyr Cove. The original stone estate, which we'll go into shortly, was established by him and it took four years to build. There is a 600-foot tunnel that connects the main lodge to the boathouse and there's lots of stories about that boat house and the tunnel as well. We've heard along the, along the way that Frank Sinatra 
came here to play cards occasionally. If Frank Sinatra played cards here, he would have played in the Thunderbird card house. It has been rumored that the Thunderbird Lodge is haunted. Is that the case? Do you know anything about it? We have done some investigation. We believe that there are some um, <laughs> ghosts here of some paranormal. There is some paranormal activity here that we have become aware of since we've been here and started investigating. Our hunt took us down the narrow and nerve-wracking tunnels underneath the Thunderbird. The tunnel leads to first the card house and then to the boat house. This is blasted out of solid granite by Cornish miners. This door is a secret spiral staircase that goes up to the Thunderbird card house. Come and look. Let's go. I love the idea of a secret card house. <laughs> so did George. Yeah. Oh, this is a great little room. This is the Thunderbird card house. Wow. Nice. For all these secret games. <laughs> exactly. High stakes, too. So if someone like Frank Sinatra came to this room, he'd be playing cards here. This is where he would have played, yes. The energy in the card room wasn't giving us any leads, so Mary Ellen led us to the boathouse, the place where the majority of alleged paranormal activity took place. This must be the boathouse. This is the boathouse. When was this built? This was built in 1939 in time for the Thunderbird to arrive at the lake from Bay City, Michigan in 1940. And has there been anything sensed in here ever? Yes. What kind of things have been sensed in here? Um, a lot of Native American voices. The last sensitive felt that someone had died here. She said a very drunk woman died here, fell off the boat, and it was an accident and nobody ever knew, you know, that she was dying until it was too late. I'm sensing something more over here. Where did she sense it? Um, right about where the bow of the boat is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's telling me not to go over there. <laughs> it's spooky with those noises, isn't it? It's not nice. It's a bit, it's much more chilling. Yes. And the noises are a bit scary. It is scary in here. And you prancing about, freaking me out. <laughs> that hey, always works. Something else prancing out back there. Kind Sorry, guys, I was just feeling something behind us, and I'm trying to see if I can get it on film. Don't expect your camera to work very well, Chris. Nobody's uh, does. I see that. Chris, we're yeah. going to switch the lights off in here. Yeah, switch the lights off. Don't be afraid. It's horrible. It always sounds like someone falling in every time you hear that noise. Hey, Gail? Yeah? I had 20 minutes left on my camera. Yeah? Now it's dead. Does that happen? Oh, it's happened. Just a second ago, I had like 19 minutes, 20 minutes left. Yeah. And right now, my battery thing's going on. I have no time left at all. It just drained my camera. It doesn't want any pictures. It's every time. All right, I'm going. You okay? Go. It's, I'm having a feeling of get the hell out of here. You what? I'm having a feeling it does not want to be here. It's telling me to go. Get out. Yeah. I don't think it likes men. Maybe it's a woman then. Maybe it is a woman. Whatever it is, I'm not staying back there. I have 19 minutes left on this camera. <laughs> It's them closing the door. Was that you guys closing the door? Yes. Don't do that. We did pick up an EVP, but it wasn't in there. Okay. And it said, um, get out. Get out of here. Where, did, where was that picked up? It was upstairs in George's bedroom. Do you want to go and play? Yes, I want to get another tape. Put tape. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. Because I want you to ask questions, because she might be more familiar to you. Something just banged oh. on there. It banged? Yeah. Go on. No, 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 you take it. Give me the camera. Go do it. It's five minutes left. So, are you filming? You're streaming your battery, too. I'm right behind you, Gail. 
Hi. Knock once to stay. Knock twice if you want us to leave. She doesn't like me, so don't speak. Can you hear us? Can we get out now? Right, I've had enough. Come on, out now. I was overcome by a need to leave the boathouse as soon as possible. When we later filtered the sound, we made what appears to be a startling EVP recording. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. This is a recording of unknown sounds or voices for which there's no logical explanation once you've discarded radio signals, people present, or electronic interference. Had my subconscious picked this up? Can we get out now? Right, I've had enough. Come on, out now. Out now, 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 now. We made our hasty retreat along the winding, claustrophobic corridors. We were all unnerved, but wanted to continue and investigate another allegedly active area, the bedroom of George Whittle, the original owner of the Thunderbird. So this is George's bedroom. Is there anyone here? Do you want us in here? I don't get anything in I'm here. I'm going up there. Are we okay to go up there? Uh-huh. That was me humming, sorry. Yeah, but the wind is off. <laughs> Chris. What? Check out the safe. Safe? Right there. Is there any money in here? Not anymore. The safe's open. Uh-huh. We opened it. Had something just attacked Chris, or had the uneven floorboards in the Thunderbird caused him to stumble? No, oh, I'm just, I'm just standing there, and something like just shoved me right in the stomach, I'm shaking. Has there been any other stories up at that safe? Just when somebody else went in there, they felt panic. They didn't experience exactly what Chris experienced. I guess I'm not supposed to be in that room. I've never seen anything like what just happened to Chris, where I wouldn't have suggested he go in there. Whoever or whatever was lurking at the Thunderbird obviously didn't want us around. Would the supposed paranormal activity at the Cal Neva make us any more welcome? In fact, would it ever want us to leave? He's spooky. Hang on a second. Oh, is this cool? Look what I got. Day three and our investigation into the spirit of Frank Sinatra was about to lead us to our ultimate destination. Hiya. How are you doing? Good. How are you feeling this morning? Yeah, I'm okay, actually. I enjoyed myself last night, strangely enough. Yeah, I did. It was the first time that I've conquered a bit of my fear of the dark and, and sort of marched ahead, and, and I felt a bit more like I was really interested, but then still completely spooked. Well, the, first of all, I'm impressed with you. That's quite good, isn't it? So, but i got to agree with you, I did not feel Frank. No, he you definitely wasn't there. Well, I think it's, it's the Cal Neva. We've got to go to Cal Neva. Okay. The original Cal Neva Lodge was built on a sacred Washoe Indian tribal ground in 1926 by wealthy businessman Robert P. Sherman. Sinatra fell in love with the place and he himself owned the Cal Neva from 1960 to 1963. 
Hollywood followers enamoured with Sinatra and the Rat Pack made the Calneva a celebrity hotspot, and regular guests included John F. Kennedy, mobsters such as Sam Giacana and Marilyn Monroe. It was a beautiful place and a beautiful setting and beautiful people. But the Calneva is not just home to a colourful past. It's rumoured to be host to a wide range of strange, unexplained phenomena. There's an awful lot of active paranormal activity in this hotel. The Calneva is very active. Um, I don't know if it's the show business, the gambling, the alcohol, um, the beautiful location. It certainly could be the ghost of Frank Sinatra. Uh, I think there's several entities or paranormal spirits about. Look, this is the very famous line that separates this lodge. This half is Nevada, mm -hmm. that half is California. You going to California? Are you kidding me? You're in California. <laughs> Different state. What's the weather like over there? It's actually snowing in California. It's snowing in Nevada. <laughs> we waited to meet Rick, Calneva's head of security and an expert on the goings on in the hotel. Kale, good to meet you. Hi. Hi, Chris. Chris, good nice to, meet to meet you. You too. Good to meet you. How long have you worked here? Well, I've worked here myself for about seven years, uh, and I'm the history nut here. I'm the one who has researched all the history behind Frank Sinatra and Marilyn Monroe. Now, we've heard that there's been a few sightings and um, ghostly apparitions. Do you know much about this? We have an engineer, a chief of engineer here, uh, and there's areas uh, in this building he won't go anymore. The second instance is uh, uh, we have two windows in the casino area. Rumor has it that Frank Sinatra got, got upset one day uh, with somebody and threw a couple of glasses, drink glasses, up against some windows. These are very thick windows, a half inch thick. And every time we replace those windows now, for some reason within a couple of days they crack. So we're looking for the spirit of Frank Sinatra. Where is a good place for us to start? Well, Frank Sinatra, of course, his cabin was number one. Uh, he slept there. Uh, he entertained there sometimes. And he had a tunnel built. Now this here is the tunnel that Frank built. So what was the actual purpose for this tunnel? He had a lot of uh, shady characters that would come and visit him, Sam Giacana being one of them. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, when she came up here, she'd like to be incognito, so to speak. So he had this built so that he could get to his office with nobody seeing him, or he could go all the way to his cabin and come up into his closet and nobody would even know he's here. So you'll see that this tunnel abruptly ends right here. So the tunnel only goes about halfway now, and that's because years ago, when they put the patio in outside between the, uh, the Indian room and his cabin, Frank Sinatra's cabin, that's when uh, it caved in. So what you're seeing here is a set of stairs, cement stairs. They went up into Frank Sinatra's office. Now, have any things ever happened down here at all? Myself, I've never seen anything or felt anything that was abnormal. Uh, the only thing I, I find <clears throat> peculiar is, is that this tunnel never warms up. And, and I find that kind of unusual because you'd think that some of the heat from the casino and, and the building above would get into here, and it just never seems to. We moved on to cabin number one, Frank Sinatra's suite. Welcome to Frank Sinatra's cabin. God, it's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. It is quite small, but then again, this is, he only used this to sleep in. Do you think he chose this just because it was nearest to, to the To the casino? Yeah. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is where he had the tunnel built and to come up into the closet. Okay. Has anyone ever said that they've felt anything or seen anything here since Frank Sinatra's death? About three years ago, we had a television in here, and for whatever reason, it kept turning on. Uh, we would turn it off, and within an hour, it would come, up and come back on. Yeah, it tends to be with ghosts that they will mess with the electromagnetic waves of any type of appliance. Yeah. So... Yeah. It was spooky to me. I was also intrigued to take a look inside cabin number three. This is Marilyn Monroe's cabin. Okay. This is where she stayed every time she came up to the Calneva. Seems a little bit nicer than that one. And she had a gorgeous view out the yeah, window. Absolutely view. gorgeous view. Interesting thing about this cabin, uh, Marilyn Monroe's big mistake in life was to let it be known that she was going to write her memoirs 
would have been real embarrassing for the Kennedys, uh, the Mafia, Frank Sinatra. Bobby Kennedy was actually here one, one weekend. Uh, visiting her. Now, whether it was business or whether it was pleasure, nobody really knows. They only know that a week later she was found dead in Los Angeles from an overdose. Do you sense anything in here, Chris? Yeah, the minute we walked in, I was feeling something moving around. Um, I was wondering if it was just my eyes playing tricks, but when I stand still, I see the corners of my eyes, something whipping around. Did she come here a lot? She came here quite often. Uh, Frank and her were quite, quite the item for a while. Uh, about two months before she actually died in Los Angeles, she did take an overdose in this cabin. Oh, did she? And she, she dialed the operator of the hotel. Uh, Frank Sinatra came down here real fast, found her laying naked in the middle of the floor. He immediately uh, scooped her up, got her in a car, and got her to a hospital and had her stomach pumped. <sighs> yeah, there is a strong imprint here. It seemed Chris was picking up something in this cabin. But the final place in our tour was the place that Frank Sinatra designed and had built himself, the Celebrity Showroom. So this is where Frank performed, was it? This is the Frank, Frank Sinatra Celebrity Showroom. This is the showroom that he had built. Did he perform in here a lot? Uh, he performed in here quite often. One guest told me about a... Uh, uh, they came here to see Dean Martin perform, who was up on the stage. And all of a sudden, during the middle of the performance, here comes through those two doors down there, four waiters carrying a door on their, on their shoulder, Frank Sinatra laying there, drinking a martini, smoking a cigarette, and they walked up the stairs up to the stage and dumped him off, and he performed the rest of the night with uh, Dean Martin that night. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, they said it was just a, a real neat, uh, uh, exciting time. Would it be okay if I came here maybe tonight and uh, did a little investigating, paranormal investigating? Not a problem. We'd love to find out what is in here. How did you feel going around on that tour? Was there any particular parts that you found more, I don't know, more energy in than others? Well, you know, when we were looking at the stage, I definitely want to go behind that stage, go behind the curtains, everything, see if there's anything there. Do you think Frank would have left a lot of energy on the stage? Definitely. I decided that I would return to cabin number three, where Chris had obviously felt a strong presence. And I called in a group of local ghost hunters to aid Chris in his investigation. We did an investigation at the Cal Neva, and we found a lot of activity around the stage area, behind the curtains off of the um, stage area. There seemed to be, we sensed a lot of things and we got some EVP. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Janice Oberdeen. I'm a paranormal investigator and a parapsychologist. The one thing a parapsychologist would question on EVP is, would you hear the same words if I played that for you and didn't tell you what you were to hear? While Chris and his paranormal investigators headed to the stage in the Sinatra showroom, I decided to brave the dark and the freezing temperatures in cabin number three. I'm in Marilyn's room. Is there anyone in this room? Marilyn? Frank? It's really spooky. Especially with it being snowing outside. Meanwhile, on the other side of the hotel, Chris and his team were investigating the stage area. If there's anybody here that wants to say something, speak now. It seems to like that side. There's definitely some type of energy up there. Note this, I've got 80 minutes left on my camera, and I am feeling something up here already. <gasps> Look what I got. Hang on a second. Oh, is this cool. Look what I got. I got a streak. See it? Look at that streak. Well, what is it? What is it, though? It's like, it's like a worm that shot out. I've never gotten that before, ever. That is cool. I've been in this room now for just over an hour and no one's come to talk to me. It's really spooky though. I like a match. I wander around the room. If I could do this in the dark. There go. Can anybody hear me? Is 
Is there anybody down here? The camera just took a shot without me taking the shot. It's interesting. And what are you feeling, Chris? I don't really sense anything like any energy or anything. It looked like the place where the real energy was present could be found with Chris amongst the rooms and tunnels of the main building. But would a seance on the stage that Sinatra built prove too much for Chris's abilities as a sensitive? <laughs> <laughs> it's the final day in our search for the spirit of Frank Sinatra. So far we've come across a number of possible paranormal phenomenon without getting any real contact from Sinatra or the Rat Pack. So the last stage in our investigation was to work out how to take that final step. So how did you get on last night? We went to the stage, like I told you, I wanted to go there. Mm. It was very active. Was we it? had stuff floating around. I felt like I saw something. I took pictures. I got some orbs. But we felt like it was moving towards above the stage. So I said, let's go up there. As we went up there and I turned around, I felt something. And I snapped a picture. And I want to show this to you. This is, there's a couple different types you can get on film. You can get orbs, you can get ectoplasm, or you can get streaks. See that white streak that shoots across here? Mm. Streaks are sometimes the orbs moving so quickly that they create a streak right in the environment that you're at. Out of all the pictures I've ever taken, I haven't had anything like this show up. It's very rare to get this when investigators get this. Can we get that get checked this. out then? Of course we can. Was the streak a laser or something more sinister? It could have been caused by one of our cameras, but its shape seemed too disjointed to have come from our electronic equipment. I'm thinking, since neither of us have found what we can determine as Frank's spirit, I was hoping that tonight you wouldn't mind doing a seance. I think that'd be a good idea, because I don't think Frank's still around. we gotta, we got to contact him somehow. I decided that the best place for the seance to take place was on the stage of Sinatra's showroom. But as the afternoon progressed, I also made a more difficult decision to remove myself and my skepticism from the seance. Basically, a seance is a, a group gets together and tries to call in a spirit. The group energy helps call someone from the other side in. And if you're in a location where there's a, an attachment of some kind, of course that would help. My role is going to be, I'm going to frisk everybody as they come into the seance to make sure that no, there's no trickery involved. That's an essential part of a seance. You have to ensure before the seance starts that there's no trickery. I will check under the table, around the table, the area where the sitters, the, the mediums, everybody will be sitting to ensure that there's no wires, no lights, no, nothing untoward. And then I will observe the seance and hopefully be able to give a rational explanation for anything that may be occurring. Close your eyes and center yourself. We call on our friends on the other side, our guides. We ask them to open a doorway. Chris, are you feeling anything? Mm -hmm. The people within the circle were all interested in and open to the paranormal. Could this make the process more of a show than a seance? Frank, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. I'm having trouble keeping my hands down. They want to lift. I sense a little bit, somebody's here with a little bit of irritation. It's kind of like, yeah, what do you want? What is your name? Chris, what do you sense? I'm just feeling someone. It's not clear yet, though. It's really cold. <sighs> 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 I 
So I would like everyone to try and bring energy as yet down through your body and send it over to Chris. Chris appears to be channeling a spirit or an entity, or could it be that he's inadvertently fallen into a state of self-hypnosis? So who is there? If you are an entity that is with Chris, you must respect the body. Who are you? It's very cold. We are in total light here, total protection. <laughs> Who is Was Chris really channeling the spirit of a Native American Indian, or had he subconsciously absorbed the history surrounding him? Who is Chris? It seemed that Chris wasn't the only one affected by the alleged energy in the room. Dave Preston, a local radio journalist, screamed the words, get out, for no apparent reason. Open your eyes. Ground it. Is this, is this Frank? No. <laughs> Focus on who you are. You can communicate. That's why you're here, is to communicate, so do so. What's wrong now? He's glad to be back in the physical. At a seance, it is alleged Chris. that more than one energy can come through, as Chris Thank seems to be experiencing. Give Chris his body back. He could be under self-hypnosis. The power of suggestion is very strong. Thank you, Chris. But this, yeah, Chris, this? you're in control here, Chris. Chris, it's time for you to come back now. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Right. Are you all right? That was Sammy Davis Jr. Okay. I felt, I felt him. David, what was what going happened? on? I kept with you? hearing in my head just a, a huge voice yelling, "Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out!" Okay, get so out, somebody would like out, us get to get out. out of here. I did sense Frank. I did sense him. Right here, I felt Frank Sinatra very, very strongly. I don't know if that was him yelling, get out, because, you know, he had a yeah. very short temper, very short fuse. Oh, and I just got a chill from when you said man. that. Huh? I got a chill from when you said that, oh, which I mean, means that he does not like this. He's like, I and I think that's why Sammy came down to say, well, let me talk to them. Let me do something, because you don't want to do this. And, yeah, Sammy does not like us being on this stage. It was enlightening. It keeps me thinking that while I accept the paranormal, I'm not sure that I'm yet a believer. I'll be very candid with you, I was a skeptic at first, and um, after what I've been through, I think there's more to it. It seemed very, very real to me, so no, I wouldn't say I'm skeptical on that. I mean, I believe everything that just happened here. I thought it was interesting, a little frightening, and um, actually it, it went better than expected. I thought that Chris may have contact, may have had a spirit enter his body, but when we're talking about feelings, and I noticed that everyone was discussing their feelings, there's no way to prove or disprove feelings. I believe when you get a group together like that, it's very easy to jump into and convince yourself that you're feeling something, or like a mass hysteria or hypnosis. The morning after, and there was a strange stillness in the air. I waited patiently, pondering what news Chris would bring. 
had we found Sinatra. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Well, how was it? A little bit more than I bargained for. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Well, when we did the seance, I started channeling, which I've really never done before. I mean, we got an Indian, which I don't know who the heck he was. A couple other spirits came through, but I was trying to really focus after they got out of the way on Frank. And it was like this dark tunnel created, and I saw Frank at the end of the tunnel. You know, I think they actually did move on to the other side, and last night during the seance, even though you weren't there, there was a little bit of contact that was made. Mm. And I think that's as close as we're going to get, Gail. Chris obviously believed in what he'd experienced during our journey. Although I still had my doubts about the paranormal activity I'd been exposed to, I considered it to have been a successful investigation. Sinatra's spirit is still around, but whether that's in ghostly form or just on the turntable of your record player has yet to be decided. Mm -hmm.